Hello, God's children. Jesus loves you. Update on the rapture and rapture word. Most Christians will be like foolish virgins. Wise up and be ready. There was a 6.3 earthquake in central Argentina. Uh, six Lebanese killed in Damascus bus blast. With the wars and rumors going on in the world and with the earthquakes going around, we do not know the day and hour our Lord Jesus comes back. Only the Father knows. Redemption is nigh. Be ready. Rapture alert. Most Christians will be like foolish virgins. Wise up and be ready. Let me take you to Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 through 13. Then show the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five of them were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. At midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go you out and meet with him. <clears throat> then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, No, not so, lest there be enough for us and you. But go you rather than them than sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And then and they that are ready went into the him in the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterwards came unto the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, and do not know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. <clears throat> okay. Um, the virgins represent those in the kingdom or the church. The coming of the bridegroom uh, is Jesus coming for the church, the bride. The lamps represent the faith of the Christians. Extra oil symbolizes good works that accompany our faith. Jesus proclaims this parable to teach us the urgent need to always be ready for his return because we do not know the day and hour. So what does your lamp look like right now? Is it uh, one-fourth full? Is it half full? Is it three-fourths full? Or is it 100% full ready for Jesus? So why will most Christians be foolish, not have enough oil for their lamp? 80 to 90 cents. 80 to 90 percent Christians will be foolish in the end. Um, they, the foolish virgins, believe once saved, always saved. These Christians believe once they are saved, they can sin and don't have to rep repent. You must repent. Let me take you to Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent you therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of the refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. After you are saved, and when you do sin, you have to repent. It's said over 200 times in the Bible. Um, they, the foolish virgins, is not watching for the bridegroom. They get ready at one point in their life, and then they eventually start falling away because they've been waiting for such a long time to kind of give it up. <clears throat> um, so basically, they're not watching. Let me take you to Hebrews. Chapter 6, verse 4 through 6. For it is impossible for those who are enlightened, they have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tasted the good work of God, or good word of God, and the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put them to an open shame. Okay. They, the foolish virgins, is not willing to give up the world. They live the world. They're lukewarm. They live on thorny grounds. Um, they uh, praise God, but they also live the world. So kind of living both. They're kind of actually, you know, listening to two masters. They're kind of listening to God, but at the same time listening to the devil. They really can't follow two masters. There's only one who follows God. And they kind of, you know, on thorny grounds, you're uh, you're living the world, but, you know, you're, you believe in God and you're trying to do all the God stuff. 
but you're, you're you're living in the world. You're living the richness richness of this world. You're living all the great things. You know, you're not really you know picking up your cross and following God. Um, let me take you to First John, chapter two, verse fifteen through seventeen. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is of not of the Father, but of the world. And the world pass away, and therefore of. But he that does the will of God abides forever and ever. <clears throat> they, the foolish virgins, follow wolves in sheep's clothing. This is a big one. These wolves look great. These wolves are like pastors, priests, evangelists, you know, leaders of you know God. <clears throat> and they act like they love God. They uh, help save people. But these wolves are so good that the people that follow them don't see that they are not told the truth. They start to worship this wolf. They give him a lot of money. They're buying all his books and t-shirts and you know, pamphlets, all his little gifts, you know, and they're praising him like God, you know, they're, you know, putting him like the president, that he was God. <sighs> Most of these wolves are in churches and they're in the internet, so be careful. You might be found one and then you can't get out of it because they pry you in. They can see you. Be careful. Let me take you to Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. Be inwardly, they are ravening wolves. They're out there, everyone. Be ready. Um, they, the foolish virgins, don't have the love like the wise virgins do. They, they only go. These uh, foolish virgins only go to church on Sunday. And it's the only time they talk to God or the time they communicate with God. And that might be an hour or two. But a wise virgin talks to God daily and follows Jesus. Foolish virgins don't have a strong relationship with uh, Jesus. Without the relationship with Jesus, um, he will not know you. And you will not know him. Let me take you to uh, Matthew chapter 25, verse 12. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Um, we do not want to get in a situation like that. When we're at the end, you know, all of a sudden, a lot of these foolish virgins, these 89% Christians, are not going to go through the tribulation, or they're not going to go through the rapture. They'll probably go through the tribulation. When they eventually die, they're going to be at the throne, wondering, why are we at the judgment of Christ? Why are we at the throne? Make them up to God and say, you know, God will start telling their sins. And they're like, well, wait a minute, you know, you know, you forgave my sins and everything. <clears throat> you know, I cast out demons. I, uh, you know, you know, did all these great works and very these great wonders. Or I was a pastor and I saved, had people saved. I did this. He's gonna turn and look at you. First, he's gonna tell you all the things you should have done and the things that you weren't really sorry for. And he's gonna say, "Verily, verily, I say unto you, I do know you not. Depart from me." And then you're gonna be sent to hell. You do not want to be in that situation. Be careful with the wolves that you could be listening to. You could be listening to someone great. Really research them. Look in the Bible. Are they following the Bible? Are they just picking up any kind of subject and making it fit the Bible? I mean, it's scary that what's on the internet. You have to be very, very careful. When they're talking, they should have scriptures always behind what they're talking about. And that's why you always see me with a lot, a lot of scriptures. You know, I try to, when I talk about something, to try to have the scriptures back it up. So basically, this is not coming from me. This has come from God because it's his word. And that's why a lot of his words are in my videos because it's come from him. So if you're not hearing lots and lots of scriptures when someone's trying to explain something, they're just talking blah, 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 and they're not using my scriptures, you're probably falling into a wolf. Be careful, you know, because eventually when you fall into a wolf, they'll steal your money. <clears throat> and they'll act like they'll give you all these little prizes, you know, and they're not worth much and you're spending a lot of money. You're helping them live a rich life. They're living authority life. And these wolves do not like me because they're afraid I'm going to take them away, which I'm not taking them away. They just need to stop and repent what they're doing. And, you know, this is, when I'm on here, I'm doing this for God. I'm not doing this for me. It's for God and God only. And it's the same way. These wolves need to do it for God. 
not them. And that's what puts them in the wolf category. You can tell it's for them. You know, it's entertainment. It's greatness. It's getting on TV. It's just, you know, they're making this fame. They're, they're like a president. And they're, just, you know, they're doing it for them. You know, when you see someone up that high, do you think they're doing it for God or them? It's to them. They're into a sheep. They're into wolves in a sheep clothing. Be careful on that. It's so scary. They're in churches. They're on this internet. Be careful. Get your lamps ready and make sure they're full. Jesus is coming back very, very soon. Jesus loves you. God bless.